Hi, I'm Jed, this is Cook Culture. So on this channel, we get comments and questions all the time about seed oils. We promote seed oils for seasoning and or cooking if people feel that works for them. But there is a, a decent amount of people that question the quality and the health effect of using seed oil for cooking, you know, for seasoning or for cooking. And this has been a confusing topic for me for a long time. I find that seed oils and have found that, that seed oils work the absolute best for seasoning. You want to make a, a, a tremendous seasoning and have a nonstick result from using carbon steel and cast iron. Grape seed oil, sunflower seed oil, canola oil to a great extent work way better than using a saturated fat or you know a Crisco or anything else. Uh, an, an unsaturated fat seems to do the absolute best job. And so when I found out that there was going to be a debate on this topic. Two you know, educated people in this space were going to debate seed oils. I was super interested. So there is a man called Simon Hill who has a podcast. He's from Australia uh, called The Proof. And he hosted two different men to have a debate specifically on the health effects or the, or the health outcomes of using seed oil. Uh, it ended up being a three hour and 45 minute long debate. It was detailed, it was exhaustive. Um, I found it interesting. I would assume that a lot of people watching this may not take three and, a, three, and three quarter hours to watch a debate on seed oils. Um, and so one of the, the two men uh, in the debate that I ended up you know, thinking did a tremendous job and made a lot of, of you know, evidence-backed, uh, logical claims that seed oil actually is not bad for you uh, is a guy that is in the same city as me happens to be. Uh, so his name is Dr. Matthew Nigra and I reached out to him after the debate and it's like hey you know I, I really understood what you said from the science from the data um, can we talk about this a little bit further so that we could make even more clarity around what you were saying and this here is a conversation with Dr. Nigra and I where he you know is specifically states that he feels that omega-6 oils seed oils or oils with omega-6 in them predominantly or linoleic acid is really what is broken down to be the big culprit um, is actually health promoting and that seed oils are nothing to be worried about whatsoever uh, in, in cooking. So this is my conversation with Dr. Nagra and I hope you enjoy and take some value from it. Thank you so much. Okay, hi, here we are, Dr. Matthew Nagra. I'm really excited to be getting into this. I watched a debate that he was in, like I was saying, three and three quarter hours long. There was lots in it, um, all about seed oils and olive oils and all the different type of oils and what's healthy, what's not. So he's here to help explain that, that debate and, and what the outcome was because there was a lot in it. I don't expect a lot of people are gonna watch that one, but let's get to what it meant. So thanks for being here, I'd love to know. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so basically, in the online nutrition space, and, and I'm pretty active there, whether it be through Instagram, Twitter, and so on, there's a very vocal crowd who thinks that you know a lot, if not all of our chronic health issues are because of the consumption of seed or vegetable oils, being canola oil, soybean oil, grapeseed oil, so on, right, corn so, oil. So you're consuming those oils and that's what's making people sick? According to that yeah. group. And what, what kind of illness would they have? Um, so honestly, the, the um, issues that are raised by this group uh, spread far and wide, all sorts of health issues. The debate itself was focused on coronary heart disease or, or more broadly, I guess, total cardiovascular disease. Okay. Okay. And um, so I thought, why not tackle this? Because I consider that to be misinformation. I think the data is incredibly clear that vegetable oils are actually health promoting. Okay. And um, especially you know, compared to saturated fat rich foods like butter and, and all that. And relatively neutral compared to other very health promoting foods like avocado. We have recent research on that, uh, or even whole grains for that matter. Yep. So um, I thought, why not actually reach out to one of the most prominent voices in that crowd? 
crowd, in that anti-seed oil crowd, and just you know challenge them to a, a debate, if you want to say, or, or at least offer to have a discussion, a, a public discussion, so people can watch it for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I reached out to Tucker Goodrich, who's one of those individuals, um, and he did accept. It took a while to finally get the ball rolling and plan it and organize and make it happen, but it's finally happened after a, a few months of that. Yep. Um, and yeah, so it was nearly four hours long, as you said. And yep. um, I, I think, as far as everything I've heard from others who have watched the debate, um, and just from my own kind of feeling, I, I think it was pretty clear that the strongest data does suggest that these vegetable oils are health promoting. Okay. Um, so not not even neutral health promoting. Yeah, exactly. Like a, a net benefit for the vast majority yeah. of people, unless maybe if you're replacing those other really health promoting foods, where it could be potentially more neutral. Okay. And so again, we're talking about canola oil. Yeah. Because uh, canola oil seems to get a really bad yeah. rap, right? So canola oil, grapeseed oil, sunflower seed oil, mm -hmm. um, corn oil. Yeah. Right. Soybean oil. Yeah. Right, so any seed oil. Exactly, exactly. And so, uh, and actually relatively neutral compared to olive oil, I should add, even though that's not a seed oil. Okay. Um, that, that's the one thing, that's the funny thing. Uh, this this anti-seed oil crowd, they think that olive oil is great. Okay. But when you look at the data comparing olive oil to the seed oils, they're neutral. Like, they're both okay. similarly. Yeah, because like what you'll hear online, yeah constantly is that olive oil is like from the gods yeah right and everything else is just in the gutter yeah exactly right yeah and you know I, I, I talk to people every day almost about the choice of oil to use when cooking mm -hmm. and you know it is unequivocal that people feel that olive oil is superior in some way yeah and I, I know and it's so so odd because I mean the data just doesn't but, but what about the, the argument there people are like well the polyphenols mm -hmm. and what about that from a from a fruit oil to a seed oil would a fruit oil Oil where you have a lot more of the flesh, would that not have a lot more polyphenol? So um, that would depend on which fruit oil, which seed oil we're comparing. Now, if you're saying extra virgin olive oil, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily fair to compare extra virgin olive oil to like a you know super refined, say, canola oil or something like that. And okay. even in that case, I'm not convinced the benefits would be there you know, over canola oil. Right. Um, but yeah, go ahead. And is that because like the consumption that you would have in any given day would be so small that the health benefit would be so neutralized from that? I mean, we can speculate about these mechanisms. I'm honestly not too sure, but the thing is when we look at, the, what we need to look at is research on actual health outcomes. Mm -hmm. So if you if a bunch of people are consuming this type of oil and you know another bunch of people are consuming this other type of oil, but the rest of their you know, lifestyle health characteristics are fairly similar, do we see better health outcomes with that oil versus this oil? Right. And while we don't have a lot of analyses like limiting it to the extra virgin, say, olive oil right. um, versus uh, other types of oils, um, the data we have pitting olive oil as a whole versus canola oil is very neutral, yep. um, like very consistently neutral. Yep. Um, and uh, and you know, if you were to compare, say, a high quality canola or other seed oil to a to an extra virgin olive oil. I mean, again, I just don't see a compelling reason to think that there would be a huge benefit there. And, and yeah, it might have to do with the amounts. Like you're not you're not guzzling the stuff, right? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're having you know a tablespoon here, a tablespoon there, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. So the the it, I didn't know Tucker Goodrich from anybody when I started watching the debate. Uh, I knew you because you live here in Vancouver, so do we. Um, and you're also on my channels. I pay attention to what you're promoting, um, and that's our lifestyle. Uh, but it was it was interesting to uh, try to understand where the messaging was. So is that messaging that omega-6 oils are bad for health, so negatively affects health, and that olive oil should be the replacement at all times? Or is this an issue with saturated fat is actually not as bad as people say it is, and we should eat more saturated fat and not omega-6? Like, where is this um, going? So my opinion, as I've made clear, I think unsaturated fat rich oils are better than saturated fat rich oils yep. whether you want to choose one type like olive oil over a, or over a seed oil or vice versa i think it's a toss-up right now the arguments that come from that crowd actually vary a little bit <laughs> depending on who you talk to yep. um, now for tucker his argument would be that olive oil is fantastic and and i'm honestly not sure if you would place olive oil above say butter or or if they would be similar I mean, that's just not entirely clear to me, but he would place both saturated fat rich sources like butter and, of course, olive oil above vegetable oils or seed oils. Right. So that much I can tell you for but sure. But also understanding that, like, is it clear usually do you find in that crowd that saturated fat 
is something to be no they're just like go nuts yeah uh, for the most part they tend to deny that sort of a, a link which is crazy to me given how consistent that data is yeah because it seems that like and we're kind of really getting the weeds here yeah. but it seems that then people break apart saturated fat into fluffy fat and non yeah like, <laughs> no, no 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 so that's LDL cholesterol that, right that's but then idea. that come from from but it's LDL cholesterol but that comes from saturated fat no um so saturated fat can raise your LDL cholesterol it's not it's not necessarily turning into the LDL cholesterol Right, but I guess what I'm getting at is that that direct translation is that people, it seems to hear, are that if I'm eating saturated fat and it's not becoming small dense yeah, yeah, particles yeah, yeah. that I'm okay, I can just do whatever I want. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely false, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where, yeah. you know, like, and I try to pay attention. I don't pay a ton of attention to saturated fat because I don't consume very much saturated fat. You know, I eat yeah. a bit of coconut here and there and that sort of thing, but I'm not eating, you know, predominantly saturated fat, so I don't really care that much. Yeah. So I just kind of go off of, you know, what most people do. You just hear stuff, right? You yeah, read yeah. something, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you for that. So I've got my list of questions for you here. So obviously you believe that seed oils are neutral health positive. You talked about being health positive. Uh, and omega-6 is an essential oil. Um, like, how did omega-6 get vilified? Where did this come from? What's the yeah. nucleus of this? Um, so there, there are a few avenues, I think, here. I think the big one is that the primary source of omega-6 fats in the American diet, or probably the Canadian diet as well, yeah. is processed food, ultra-processed food. You buy you know, potato chips at the grocery store or something, it's probably got sunflower oil or something in there, right? And so, and, and this actually came up during the debate. I brought this to Tucker's attention. If, if these vegetable oils are coming in this package with a whole bunch of other stuff that is potentially harmful for health, actually mayonnaise was one that specifically came up in the debate because right. it's also got all the salt, it's also got the eggs and all that in there. Right. Um, how can you pinpoint it or how can you, you point yeah. to the vegetable oil as being the problem? What you need to do is look at all other things held equal, does the vegetable oil actually lead to, to you know health issues and no actually it seems to be beneficial especially for cardiovascular does it, disease. Does it seem that they're saying well actually there's research that shows that omega-6 oils can be inflammatic comparatively to omega-3 oils and that's yeah, the problem? So, so that's the that's the other problem but just to finish up on that that first point um, one of the things that was raised I think this might have been after the debate so unfortunately I don't think it was in the video itself is, is I think Simon actually asked if uh, you know to Tucker if you think that um, or yeah would you take the position that if you were to just keep ultra processed food as they are and just simply replace the vegetable oil with like butter would right. you think that it would be better and he actually said yes he right. which is that is absurd to me yeah that's it's hard so, to understand but but that's kind of that's kind of explaining or, or showcasing the logic there is that okay all of these problems with these vegetable oils that we have is or sorry with these you know processed foods that we have is, is pinned on the vegetable oil for whatever reason when we actually have research comparing uh, like the there was a, a randomized trial I talked about, the LA Veterans trial, and, yeah. and I won't get into all, all the details here, but basically what they did was they took a bunch of food, they had two different cafeterias, and people who were living in, a, in an institution at the time uh, were randomized to go to one cafeteria or the other. And one of them was just kind of regular fare, and the other one was like the same foods essentially, but they infused the foods with vegetable oils and removed the saturated fat. Okay. So they would take ice creams and like infuse them with vegetable oils right. and, and so lower it seems like saturated. a perfect study for what you it's, guys It's about. exactly yeah. what we need. And and we had it back in the, what was it, 80s or something, yeah, like, you know, yeah. forever ago we've had this done. Yeah. Um, or 90s, I, I can't recall. I think it was the 90s you guys were Yeah, there. yeah, and, and so, um, but that's what they did. They did it for all the different foods. They even yeah. took like like sausages and like removed the saturated fat and then wow. you know, implemented vegetable yeah, oils. Yeah. And then they actually did a pilot, a small study, making sure that uh, people actually um, thought the flavor was good, that they weren't able to tell which one they were getting, and so it was blinded. They didn't know which group they were in. Right. It's like perfect. It's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. what you would need to see. Yeah. And in that case, there was a, a huge reduction in risk of, of cardiovascular disease. Okay. Um, comparatively, like that should be end of story, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly when compared to saturated fat. Right. Um, so, but, but that's discounted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's discounted for, and I mean, it's hard to, to talk about all of the reasons that, that they were discounting it, but just none of them came through. None of them actually 
panned out. Every single concern that was brought up with that study, I had an answer for. Right. And it was actually <laughs> acknowledged in the study. There, were, there was a funny point where Tucker thought he had an argument about something, and then he started reading the text right. um, from the study itself, and the confidence in his voice like right. deflated right. Yeah, as, he realized, as he realized it was countering his own point. Right. Um, so that was kind of funny. But anyway, so that's the one issue. Yeah. The other thing is, yeah, they raised this concern of, oh, well, it raises inf inflammatory markers. It causes inflammation. And the reason that they believe that is because, so the omega-6 uh, fat in, in vegetable oils, linoleic acid, is also in other plants like nuts and seeds and so on. Um, that one technically, based on the pathway, can turn into another fat or be converted into another fat called arachidonic acid. Okay. Now that fat can have inflammatory properties. The thing is, we have research on actually feeding humans this linoleic acid and not raising arachidonic acid levels and not raising inflammatory markers, and if anything, actually decreasing inflammatory markers. Right. So, so when we test it in yeah. humans, it doesn't pan out. So, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It all starts getting so mind-blowingly <laughs> yeah. detailed at that point in time, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so. Sorry, my glasses. Yeah. Uh, what happens to oil quality when it's heated? So that you know, people that watch this channel are interested in cooking, right? right? And there's we talk about um, you know oxidization. You know, we've talked people bring that up often. Oil shouldn't be heated too far. Blah 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 blah. You know, definitely there is a smoke point, and you can visually see when an oil starts to degrade, it starts to start to smoke. You start burning it, right? And I advocate for seasoning specifically iron cookware with using grapeseed oil because it seems to not degrade so quickly. It works so incredibly well, but that's where you get pushed back that it's you know, problematic, that sort of thing. But you know, in that, that question, when you're cooking with oil and heating oil, where do you see that being you know, an issue? I, I would say it's not really an issue. Okay. And the reason being is, again, we have research on people who consume these oils in, in the form of like cooking, who mm -hmm. cook with them. And again, cooking with things like canola, cooking with things like corn oil, um, and so on, not associated with poor health outcomes, actually associated with good health outcomes, yeah. especially in place of butter and those other things. So even, a fair, very good point. Yeah. So, but oxidation, can you, yeah. like, can you, that, yeah, that, yeah. that seems to be that issue. Yeah. People so can see that in their head and yeah. then it oxidizes and then, you know, oxidation in your body is so bad. Yeah, yeah, so that's one of the arguments that gets raised, but, um, and, and while it can occur to some degree, I don't think it occurs to the sort of degree that, that often is suggested. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just comes back to health outcomes. What happens when people actually do this? Does their health go downhill? Do they have a higher risk of disease? And like I just said, they don't. Right. If anything, it's beneficial. So we almost have to, to take a step back when talking about these mechanisms that could be at play because there could be, there could be hundreds of mechanisms at play. Like there's so many different moving parts, right? Just because, and, and we again brought this up in the debate, there was a specific study that Tucker r raised um, to suggest that olive oil was better than canola oil or, or other vegetable oil, sorry. Um, and uh, and there was a, a figure that he had that like seven or eight different mechanisms on it that were listed for reasons that olive oil could be beneficial. And one of them was lower rate of oxidizability okay. or lower susceptibility to oxidation. Okay. And he kept saying, see, it's the mechanism says that this is, the, or, or this is the mechanism, therefore, because vegetable oils aren't as good in that respect, then they are, are worse for our health. But I was like, look at all those other six or seven mechanisms that are listed right there. How do you know that vegetable oils aren't doing better in that way? Right. How we know is you look at the health outcomes. And in the very study that he himself cited, it clearly showed that vegetable oils were neutral compared to olive oil. So if olive oil is so good because of this one mechanism, well, then vegetable oils are just as good because of probably other mechanisms. Okay. That, yeah, I, I understand what you're yeah. saying there, but it, it, that I just want to come back to the one thing mm -hmm. that people believe to be gospel, that olive oil is, is the best oil. Mm -hmm. So if you're shopping for an olive oil that you're going to use for making salad dressing, mm -hmm. for instance, I, I, you think from a health outcome perspective, grabbing a canola oil or a high-end, beautiful, organic, first-pressed olive oil is going to be the same health outcome over, over a long period of time? Um, so, okay. So on the net, comparing those two, I think they're very similar. I would actually say if we were to, um, if we were to take all of the vegetable oils out there and to look at a couple with the strongest evidence, mm -hmm. it would be like extra virgin olive oil or a high quality canola oil. Yeah. I think those two just consistently stand above everything else. Um, not necessarily because the other oils are harmful, but just because there's so much data on those oils and, and it's so consistent. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
let's say if there is benefit to choosing the fancier version of the oil, mm -hmm. we'll say over over the just kind of standard, mm -hmm. um, whether it's standard canola, standard olive, maybe. I, I would say that is an area where maybe we're a little less clear yeah. um, on, on you know if there's benefit or in particular how much benefit there would be. Yeah. If there is, I, I think it'd be pretty modest. Okay. But hey. If, if you have the means and yeah. you want to just take that extra step, go for it. Yeah, no, there's no, definitely a flavor issue. There. Exactly, 100%. exactly. Like, yeah. just go for it. It's totally, totally fine to do. I just don't want anybody to be fearful of those other options that are obviously far more cost-effective sure. and point. widely available yeah. and overall very healthy, yeah. right? So that that's the one thing. Don't shy away from these other, you know, oils, whether it be the sunflower or, or whatever, just because you're concerned about these little details when overall it's going to be a super healthy food right okay yeah it's true you know if you're buying a beautiful bottle of olive oil you can be into 30 to 50 bucks for a half <laughs> yeah. liter really quickly right yeah. it's it's not hard you don't go to whole foods and you've got five dollar oils and then fifty dollar oils yeah right? so it, it is a good point you know i chefs when i work with them a lot of the time they'll make a salad dressing with 50 percent seed oil and 50 percent olive oil mm. right they're just like that's how we're taught in school right that's how you're making your money go further yeah. right? so um I, I appreciate that point a lot of italians are going to be really upset with us but I do appreciate the point all right well I think that you know from from what I was we're wondering about from watching the debate to now you know you've 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 cleared things up for me clearly I really appreciate that I will feel a lot more confident saying to people when they are questioning me on what type of the best you know oil for cooking with or specifically seasoning with I think that's now quite clear so I really appreciate that um, we have some um, research studies that we could put in the show notes of here. Oh yeah, you, you can. Uh, I can send you whatever. Excellent, you need. awesome. Yeah. So we'll put anything you know for people that want to really see the research and the study, uh, and also the debate. As I said in the intro, will be in the show notes. Uh, and how do people oh. follow you? How do people know where to get a hold of you? Yeah, so I'm I'm most active on Instagram if you're on there. Uh, at dr. Matthew Niagara, so just Dr. Matthew Niagara. Um, also on Facebook, Twitter, same name, just my name. Um, although, again, most active on Instagram. And then I have a website, drmatthewniagara.com. And if you're based in Vancouver or in British Columbia as a whole, I am accepting patients as well. You're welcome to, to you know, book an appointment or even a, a free meet and greet, which is a, kind of a little chat to see if it's worth working with me or, or something that we can do. Um, and yeah, other than that, I think that's pretty much all I got. If you got any other questions, you can always send me a message on social media. Yeah, or throw them below too, and I can always send them on to Dr. Nagra. So thank you so much, appreciate it. So a huge thanks to Dr. Nagra. That was really, really informative for me. I, you know, I, it's a funny world that this is in, in this space, because this really isn't a plant versus animal conversation over here. You know, the, the world of people that are saying that linoleic acid is so incredibly bad, seems to lean more towards, you know, hey, just eat saturated fat and that is better for you. But at the same time, olive oil is a champion. So it, it is, it's confusing and kind of messy. What I'm taking value from in the conversation of the debate and my conversation with Dr. Nagra is that the science doesn't prove the theory that omega-6 you know, or seed oils are bad for you. That the, the science doesn't show it. And I will go with the science and the data any day. I'm happy to change my opinion on something. Um, you know, and I didn't really have an opinion before. I knew what worked well for, for cast iron, for, for carbon steel, but I didn't really have an opinion on the health effects or the health outcome, because I didn't know. And now I do, uh, I, you know, and I can see the studies that I've referenced here, and I hope that helped for you, and I hope that gives you some comfort going forward, you know, looking after your cookware and cooking. So thanks so much. Any questions, throw them below.